In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, when our world lay in ruins, you raised it up again on the foundation of your Son's passion and death. Give us grace to rejoice in the freedom from sin which he gained for us, and bring us to everlasting joy. We ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on an ass, on a colt the foal of an ass. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. I will give you glory, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. I will, I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God. I will, I will bless, bless your name, name forever, O God, my King. The Lord is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds. The Lord supports all who fall and raises all who are bowed down. I, I will bless, bless your name, name forever, O God, my King. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. You are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God really dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, 
you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus declared, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and understanding, and revealed them to mere babes. For yea, Father, such was thy gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Sublimely comforting as these words from St Matthew's Gospel are, they've been used almost since the beginning of Christianity as much for their polemical potential as their profound reassurance. Both sides, in the Aryan controversy of the 4th century, for instance, used it to support their radically differing opinions about the two natures of Christ, seizing on Jesus' words that everything has been given to me by my Father. One side emphasised the word given, implying that the Son was not equal to the Father. The other side emphasised the word everything, implying the opposite. In the 16th century, no less than Martin Luther himself used this text to defend the Reformation doctrine of sola fides, faith alone. His very last sermon in February 1546, preached three days before his death, was on precisely this passage. Luther saw in it an endorsement of the Protestant stress on personal revelation, available to any simple reader of the Gospels over against what he regarded as the mendacious, self-serving interpretations of scripture offered by interfering kings, domineering bishops, and to use his own words, that decoy duck in Rome, by which of course he meant our Holy Father, the Pope. In the same century, Calvinists used it as a proof text for their depressing doctrine that it's already decided who's saved and who's damned quite independent of anything we might do, or even more unfairly, anything we might manage not to do. And in the 17th century, deists used it to decry the evils of priestcraft, by which they claimed the innocent are deceived and the unwary are lured into superstition. And coming full circle, it's even been used to justify universal papal jurisdiction especially by Boniface VIII. Everything has been given to me by my father. He thought, as he would, spoke for itself. But leaving aside all these polemical uses, this passage comes at a crucial point in Matthew's narrative. Its immediate background is the religious establishment's increasing hostility to Jesus, in contrast to the welcome given him by those deemed by the pious to be outsiders. And this is the very first time that Jesus makes it plain that in him all expectations, both worldly and religious, are being reversed. The first shall be last, and the last first. 
The poor and the outcast will be rewarded and the rich sent empty away. No wonder then the religious authorities were out to get him. He was openly declaring that since the heritage of Moses and the prophets entrusted to Israel had been squandered, it now belonged to the simple, the unlettered, the unlearned. In Greek, napioi is the word he uses, little ones, literally infants, rather than Israel's religious and intellectual elite. And the people he has in mind when he uses that word are specifically those whose company he seems actively to have sought and preferred, the poor and dispossessed, outcasts, women of ill repute, the unlettered, crooks and crocs, as Ronnie Knox once called. But apart from their marginalised status, what these all had in common was that they turned to him in their freely acknowledged need, uninhibited by pride or vanity. And later in the Gospel, the same napioi, exactly the same word, but this time meaning quite literally children, are made the model for all of us. Unless we become like children, the kingdom of heaven, Jesus warns, will be closed to us. Not closed to us by God, but by our own blindness, because we won't even recognise it when we see it. Now, by far the best known part of this passage is the ending, what 19th century Protestants referred to as the call of the Saviour. Come to me, all you who labour and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. It forms the basis of the so-called comfortable words inserted by Cranmer into the communion service of the first Book of Common Prayer in 1549, words that the Swiss reformer Swingley put on the title page of everything he ever wrote. Hard-line Protestants, anachronistically soaring these words of our Lord, a clear reference to the burdens of law, ritual and false doctrine laid on men's shoulders, not by the law of Moses, which is what Jesus meant, but by that scarlet woman, Rome, again. But no one can doubt that when Jesus speaks of his yoke being easy and his burden being light. He's distinguishing his yoke and his burden from the law, which by this time was often spoken of as the yoke, and by which time definitely had become a burden, mainly because of the myriad accretions and interpretations added to it by the scribes in the form of regulations and external observances, mostly associated with purity laws and fasting and abstinence. Jesus clearly had in mind what he later refers to as the burdens laid on men's shoulders by the Pharisees, who lifted not a finger to ease them. Now the point about yokes is that they make otherwise impossible tasks possible. A well-fitting yoke makes the world a difference. A bespoke yoke, you might say, is the only kind that works. And what Jesus is saying is that his yoke is easy precisely because it fits, because it's made for us. It isn't, in other words, a burden at all. Rather, it makes the impossible possible by freeing us to be ourselves, to be our real selves, to do and be that which leads to genuine happiness. And this is because unlike the old law, which invites obedience, the gospel, the new law, God's word, Jesus himself, invites love in return for love. And finally, it's nothing short of remarkable that when Jesus says that his yoke is easy, the word used in Greek for light is Christos, just one letter different from the word Christos. No one who read the original text of this passage could have failed to be struck by the closeness of these two words, which suggests that to take his yoke upon us, upon ourselves, means precisely what St Paul meant by saying that we are to put on Christ, to be conformed to him, in other words, inwardly, learning from 
and conforming to his presence within us, in his gentleness and meekness, being taught by the Holy Spirit, who, as St Paul again says, has been poured into our hearts. And what is the rest that we'll find for our souls? It is the freedom to live to the full without fear of either the past or the future. The freedom to live fully now in the present by living in him. Because if we live in him, if we share his life, then death is no longer ahead of us, but behind us. And if we need not fear even death, there is absolutely nothing we need fear. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us bring before God our Father all our needs. For grace to be instruments of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For grace to acknowledge and prize God's gifts, to others as well as ourselves, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For grace to share generously what we ourselves have been given, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For grace to be fearless before injustice and courageous in difficulty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For grace to make wise choices, to persevere in our commitments, and humbly to acknowledge our needs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our college, for its mission, and its members past and present, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick and the dying, the lonely and the unloved, and all in any kind of need, remembering especially Peter Linehan, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who have died, especially Frank O'Keefe, and all whom we have known and loved, as well as all former members and benefactors of our college, whose anniversaries occur around this time, that they will rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us ask Mary, the Mother of God, to pray for us. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed Let art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray in silence for all who have asked for our prayers and for our own intentions.
Heavenly Father, hear all our prayers and grant all our needs through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and joy of his name, the power and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings purify us, O Lord, and bring us closer to the life of heaven. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, power and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, you who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy yes. on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this mingling the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and in the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting. to the 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been nourished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be with you.